Hi everybody, welcome back. We are looking today at Jeremy Duff, Elements of the New Testament Greek. We're in chapter 12, the first chapter on the subject of the third declension. And we're looking today at two words, which are both pronouns, both third declension pronouns, tis and tis. Yeah, you got that right. They look exactly the same, and in fact they're quite different. And if you look at the page 140 of Duff, you'll see a pretty good explanation of uh, what they are, what their differences are. I'm going to break this into two videos. In this one, we're just going to talk briefly about the meanings of these two words and then we're going to look at their form we're going to generate the declension from the lexical form that i've put on the board behind me and in front of you then in the next video we'll go through some examples of how they're used just to ingrain them a little bit more and you'll get much more familiar with them so just take a look at duff if you've got it page 140 if you've not then take a look at this tis and tis tis without the accent tis is the indefinite pronoun. It means someone or sometimes anyone. Uh, sometimes it means a certain person. It has that indefinite quality about it. Tis with the accent on the iota is a question word. It's the interrogative pronoun. It means who or which or sometimes what. And the way I encourage you to remember the difference between them is that the one with the accent will always come with a question mark at the end of it. If it's got this squiggle, it'll have that squiggle. Technically speaking, it doesn't always come with the accent. Duff makes the point that it works 95, 99% of the time it will have the accent, but actually this is uh, the accents are added to our Greek New Testaments. They weren't there in the original texts, but you can distinguish between them because this one will always, if it's a question word, the interrogative pronoun, it will always come in a sentence with a question mark at the end of it, uh, which distinguishes it from uh, tis. Actually, other contextual factors will make it pretty clear which is which as well. And there are some other um, uh, hints on page 141, but that covers the the basis for distinguishing between them. Right, now let's just try and look at the form before in the next video we uh, just try and work out how these different words are used and become more familiar with them. Don't worry at this stage if you're thinking, I still don't really understand the difference. We will do that in the next video, I promise. Here is the form of, the, of both tis and tis that you will find in a lexicon. I've omitted the accent, so this is the uh, indefinite pronoun, not the interrogative pronoun but it will be exactly the same if it had the accents on it. I'll get rid of them so for the time being. Oops, that's ugly. There we are. So from this, we can deduce the full declension in exactly the same way as we did in the previous video with the adjective pleon, pleon, pleonos. Noting that this is the nominative, masculine or feminine singular. This is the neuter, is, is the nom nominative neuter singular, and this is the genitive singular form. So from that, you can now create on your sheet of paper in front of you, or imagine on the board here, I'll write it out, the full declension. Let's do it together. Let's start with the masculine and feminine form. Well, we're going to begin with tis, because that's the nominative singular. Then we're going to go over here and get the stem, tin, tis, tina, tinos, tini, tines, tinas, tinon, ah. and our old friend the dative plural is going to throw us again, tin, sin. Just have a think about that. No, that isn't going to work very well together. The new is going to disappear and we're going to be left with tisin. Tis, tina, tinos, tinit, tines, tinas, tinon, tisin. That's the masculine and feminine form of both the interrogative and the indefinite pronoun. The neuter form, very, very, very easy as well. We begin with this, ti, and then we generate the rest of the declension from it. Ti, ti, because neuter 
nominative accusative are always the same. And then for the rest of the declension, we simply follow the pattern from over here. So do I need to copy those out over there? Go on, I will do, just because it's you. Tinos, tine, tines, tines, tinone, tisin. That only leaves the neuter, plural, nominative and accusative. What's that going to be? Well, we just get the stem, tin, tin, and then we think, what ending is it going to be? It's going to be the same ending that we're used to in other neuter, plural, nominative, accusative nouns. Tina, tina, ta-da, there you are. That's the full declension for tis, ti, tinos, the uh, interrogative and indefinite pronoun. Come back in the next video and we will have a look at how these are used and I will untangle all the confusion that you might be feeling deep down within your heart as you look at the bottom of page 140 and 141 in Duff's excellent book. But for now, keep working at this, 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day. I'm sure that by now, with these last few weeks of these videos on the third declension, you've got the endings down. But go through them again, get them nice and secure in your mind, and we'll have you reading the New Testament in Greek in no time at all. God bless. Bye for now.